Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, is written and directed by Paul Schrader. It came out in 1985. So Mishima was obviously last week's patron poll winner. Actually, it wasn't even last week's patron poll winner. It was last last week's patron poll winner. Um, I'm only late to this because I just had so much random, unfortunate things happening in my life that this is coming to you guys late. Pretty much every review that I'm doing this week is essentially a late review. But I'm catching up this week, so everything will be back on track in no time. So now, with all that unnecessary information out of the way, Paul Schrader is a filmmaker and writer that I have an interesting relationship with because in terms of his writing and his screenplays, I really love Taxi Driver, and I love The Last Temptation of Christ. Um, just whenever he teams up with Martin Scorsese, I just think it creates just some incredibly memorable and thought-provoking pieces of filmmaking. But I will have to say, First Reformed was a film that he both wrote and directed, and even though a lot of people really loved that film, I really wasn't into it. I came out of that film quite underwhelmed. Um, that being said, I've only seen it once, so one of these days I plan to revisit it and assess it according to that watch. But, obviously I'm saying this because he's a filmmaker that, even though I think he's written some incredible pieces, in terms of his directing, I haven't seen that much of, and the one that I have seen, um, I really didn't like that much, and I was kind of disappointed by it. So going into Mishima, I had that a little bit in mind, and I was like, okay, Let's see what this filmmaker has done in the past that can really change my mind about his direction. And let me just say this about Mishima. This film I found to be absolutely stunning and honestly, one of the more breathtaking pieces of filmmaking that I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, this is a film that we have to just go ahead and get out of the way. It's just a piece of aesthetic beauty. Um... The aesthetic presentation of this film, in terms of the way the score is composed and utilized in the film, in terms of the production design, in terms of the camera work and cinematography, is quite stunning. Um, it's part of what makes this film incredibly beautiful and special, in my opinion. Because the way that this film is presented to you in terms of its vision, direction, and aesthetics, not only is it just beautiful, like in terms of its framing, and in terms of just the overall technical aspect of it. But it has a thematic purpose as well, because this is a film that, through the aesthetic presentation, does an excellent job at blurring the line between art and reality. And it reminded me a lot of the same way this film called Children of Paradise presented that theme, to where it kind of conveys the overall theme about how art influences life and how life influences art and how sometimes it becomes really questionable where to draw the line because they just seem to work off each other in this really harmonious way. And this film, I feel like, really presented and emphasized that point in an incredibly stunning and thought-provoking way. And the presentation of it just makes it that much more beautiful to behold. Because the score in this film is just beautiful. Philip Glass, I believe, composed it. He also composed a soundtrack for Kayani Skatsi, which is a soundtrack that is just absolutely mind-blowing and just out of this world. But the soundtrack to this film is absolutely incredible. It's really uplifting in this really cathartic kind of way because it balances melancholy and inspirational sound incredibly well. And I feel like the way it was utilized in this film just made it that much better. But the aesthetic direction and the style to this film is also as incredible as the score because, again, not only does it just look absolutely gorgeous just through the framing and the color palette, but it also has thematic purpose because the t in terms of the narrative structure of this film, a lot of what's presented to you is either through actual historical information that's presented in a black and white filter, and then you have aspects of the story that is conveyed through Mishima's short stories and plays that is presented in color. And his stories that are realized through his film are a bit autobiographical because they convey not only stuff about um, him as a person, 
and what he experienced. But also there's this thematic notion of who he is as a person. And I love the way that this film was able to convey those things, not only through its historical approach by presenting you actual information, but also through his own stories, which again, um, convey to have this really autobiographical nature to them. And I love the stylistic choice of making the third act and the ending of Mishima's life in this film to be presented in color, because again, it's that thematic notion of, I believe, Paul Schrader making the point that he also views the last minutes of Mishima's life to be a work of art of its own. That again, does a great job at expressing that theme that life and art just work so well off of each other. And it's sometimes hard to really draw the line between them because even within his own works of art, where do you draw the line and say, is this really premeditating something that's going to happen? Should we consider this artwork to be a political threat of some kind? And where do you draw the line between calling something to straight propaganda versus artistic expression? And I love that about this film, but we also have to just talk about how rich and interesting of a character Mishima is and was. Because I knew nothing about this person at all before going into this film. Um, I was first introduced to this character by this film, obviously, this real person. And I loved how complex this person was because he's somebody, as this film shows, has created many works of art. I believe he wrote over like 200 short stories and like 30 or 40 novels. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's a lot of work. And just from that notion, you wouldn't think that somebody that is this deep into artistic expression would also be really deep into politics. And I love how this film expresses the notion that this is a person that feels like he needs to fulfill a higher purpose. This is somebody that feels like his life, even though he has many artistic achievements, is void of any real objective meaning. And I love how this film expresses this actual historical event. And it shows that he has a really regretful moment of cowardice that I believe really impacted the rest of his life. And I just love how this film is able to express how principled of a person this guy was and how he really lived by this really strict code of honor that he felt like needed to be fulfilled in one way or another. Either way, this film really worked on a whole lot of levels. Um, this is a film that I would consider to be damn near perfect. There's only maybe a few moments of narration that I feel like, you know, isn't like so crazy on the nose, but there are moments where I feel like the narration didn't really need to be there. But it's such like a petty thing to really say because it's not something that was really that noticeable. But it is something that I feel like if it were taken out of the film, you wouldn't really notice. But I do think the narration in a lot of parts is memorable and very useful to the film. So, with all that being said, the aesthetic presentation is fantastic. This is one of the most stunning films I've ever seen in pretty much all phases. Um, I love the score. I love the production design. I love the expression of the thematic notions of this character. And I think that this is a really thought-provoking and also oddly inspiring film. So I'm going to give Mishima a life in four chapters, a strong nine out of 10. This film is absolutely beautiful. Um, apparently it's on Criterion, so you bet your ass on the next Criterion 50% off sale, I'm going to be getting this film because Obviously, I really, really enjoyed this film and really loved it. It totally bombed in the box office. I believe this film took like $2 million to produce and only made like 8000 or something like that. So it definitely didn't make its return on the opening weekend. I don't know about now. I'm pretty sure now it's made its money back and some more. But this is definitely a flop in the box office, which is pretty sad. Anyways, if you really enjoyed what I had to say about Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more from related content.